Now, I think last year or the year before, I bumped into a guy on social media by the name of Quack. What a name, right? Quack. Now, Quack Pitahi is his name. And basically, he is a young bloke, younger than myself again, who is basically the poster boy for diversity and and, and Maori diversity, I should say. He's, um, and I say poster boy, but he's a poster they. So my bad. He's a they them. He's very fluid. He swims like a fish. So he's basically the poster boy of woke nonsense in the Māori Party, um, of anything related to indigenous rights. Um, that's it. He's just a marketable individual. He's tatted up a lot as well. I've got a video I'll play. It's not too long, but this is just a silly video to give you the indication of just how far down the gender ideology rabbit hole he is. So let's take a quick listen. Do you go by <clears throat> they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they them pronouns. In Te Reo Māori, we don't have... We have some gendered words like big, big brother, big sister, little sister. We have papa and mama, which are traditionally tied to gender, of course. Um, and the, we have one pronoun, ia, and it refers to where, where somebody is, I a ia. Um, but I, in, a, in a Pākehā context, I don't feel like a man or woman. I feel myself swimming between the two. Some days I wake up and I want to wear a skirt and a crop top and have my long hair and have this very, like niche understanding of what it is to be a, a female or, or have femininity um but a lot of the time i'm just swimming swimming between the two the interesting thing about this video is he basically says nothing he's asked are you you go by they essentially they them pronouns and he's like yeah yeah i go by they them pronouns and then goes on to explain or suggest initially that maori don't have gendered pronouns but that they do have gendered pronouns and that the gendered pronouns are very much exactly the same as what you'd expect in the english language uh, and that they also have an alternative pronoun for those that are uh, gender non-conforming, which just refers to where someone is or something of that sort. So it's just as nonsensical as they, them, um, in this case being ear. Uh, of course, it's all gender ideology nonsense, which we uh, delve into a little bit over the last couple of weeks. But yeah, he is very much someone who is just repeating the repeating what he's learned, right? He's repeating all of the nonsense. He's repeating that gender doesn't really exist, that he can swim between both worlds, that he can have a niche understanding of what it is to be female. I'm sorry, bro. You do not have a niche understanding of what it is to be a female at all because only females can have a niche understanding of what being a female is. In fact, only females can have a true understanding of what it is to live as a female at all. Sure, you may know that females get certain things that happen to their bodies once a month, you may know that females have a certain way of developing. You may be able to know all of these things from um, a science book or something like that, right? But you'll never understand what it is like to be a woman, and that's why I myself will never understand what it's like to be a woman. I can only listen to what women say, you know, women being adult human female lad. You are not a woman because you put a dress on. You know that. You are not a female because you put a dress on. Putting a dress on does not give you a niche understanding of womanhood, of being a female. You're entitled to put on a dress. I've got no issue with you putting on a dress. My Scottish family members wear kilts every now and then, and people would regard those as dresses, though don't say that to a Scotsman. I would happily wear one in the right context. But the point here is being, it's one thing to dress a particular way. It's another thing to say that you dress this particular way because you want to feel like a girl. He just voted in his first ever election. I know who he voted for, of course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he just voted in his first ever election. And he's someone that fundamentally rejects reality. So that's great. Of course, I believe in democracy. I believe in everyone's right to vote if they're entitled to it. But it goes to show that we have people who are fundamentally out of touch with reality voting. So is it any wonder that the likes of the Greens and Party Māori managed to get as many votes as they did? Now, admittedly, Te Pāti Māori only got 3%, but that's 3% too bloody many. They also won six electorate seats. That says a lot, doesn't it? And, of course, we just have to look at the Greens. What do they get? Way too much, like 10 point something percent. Now, I had a run-in with Quack, and that's how I know who he is. I had a run-in with him on social media either last year or late 2022. I can't quite recall what it was about, but I very much believe it was something to do with Pride. In fact, it may have indeed been related to Pride last year. Um, and yeah, I can't 100% remember, but 
he got a little bit funny with it, um, so much so that he even uh, put me on his Instagram story and so forth. So it was an interesting run in. I have actually seen him in, in real life a couple of times. I didn't bother introducing myself because he was working, and I, I respect people in their workplace. So I wasn't going to interfere with that. Nonetheless, He's a character, and I would keep my eye on him because I would not be surprised if he goes from political activism into, um, you know, representing a political party in a context like parliament or something down the line, or at least working in a closer capacity than he already is. I think he will be a public figure, maybe perhaps in the same vein as Chanel Lal. And so it's for these reasons that I want to bring him into the foray a little bit because. He is an individual. He is someone with influence. He is someone with some exposure in those spaces. Uh, and, of course, he's fundamentally nuts. So, need I say more? <laughs>